Good morning gardening friends. It's Vicki with Garden Evolution. I am over at the um, my real house that is currently under construction so I'm not living here. Um, but anyway wanted to come check out the garden see how it's doing without any supplemental watering or really any attention whatsoever. Um, whew, almost fell. Um, let's see here. That is my Zephyrin Druin climbing rose that was just planted last fall, I think. Um, last summer or last fall. So that has gotten huge. Not a lot of blooms on it though. And that's been all year. So, um, not really sure. Maybe I need to add some compost or something down there. Here are my butterfly weed. Um, I think this is the swamp variety. I This is my first year growing butterfly weed, and I bought multiple types, so I'm not an expert on that, but uh, this is definitely some sort of butterfly weed right here. This is a Wygela, I want to say, and it's not looking great. Um, when I planted this, I didn't have any supplemental watering, and so like I tried to water it a couple times um, but it was like bringing jugs of water out and now we literally have no water at this house that everything is turned off so um, things are just kind of having to fend for themselves and whatever rain we get that right there is a new little shrub that I had planted also around the time that this um, tree fell in our house and so it didn't get a lot of watering um, I don't know if that's just turning color from the season or if that's from the sun or not having enough water. Anyway, the reason I pointed that out is because when I bought that at the store, it had no label on it. And the person told me they thought it was old gold, um, juniper. And I, I have multiple old golds. And as you can see here, they are all green planted along here. These were bought at a different time. So I don't think that's actually old gold. I think that might be one of those um, false cypress things. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure of the name. These are a native plant. I think it's called Anemone virginianica or something like that. These are their little seed heads. Pretty cool. Um, that is my golden alexander right there not blooming right now it blooms in the spring with yellow flowers this I think that's also a butterfly weed I don't remember what that is this is one of my hydrangeas obviously I think this one is um, strawberry vanilla so here's one of my two um, Rosa Sharon's and it still hasn't bloomed. And last year when I bought this, okay, so you know how we can all be fooled. We buy things at the garden center and they're in bloom at a certain time of year and then you plant them and then they don't bloom until a completely different time of year um, in the following season. And that's basically what's happened here. So when I bought this last year, I'm pretty sure it was like May or June and it was blooming and it bloomed all the way until, you know, freezing weather. And here we are in the beginning of August. I think it's like August 8th or 9th. And this sucker still has not bloomed. So <laughs> whenever it does finally bloom, um, I suppose it, then we'll have flowers until the end of the season. But it's not going to be for nearly as long as I thought it would be. I thought this was going to be in bloom all summer. So I don't know what to say. And I also think that it's reseeding. I've got a lot of... Um, let me walk down by my other one to show you real quick. I've got a lot of what appears to be reseeded Rose of Sharon, which I thought this variety wasn't supposed to do. This is the white columnar type. Um, I actually pulled some out last time I was here because I was concerned about it, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And I think that's what this is and maybe this. So if this shrub isn't going to bloom until, I don't know when, I don't even see buds on it. Are these buds?
But anyway, if this isn't going to bloom until like late in August or something, and then it's going to reseed everywhere, I don't even know that I'm going to keep this in my garden. All right, I got to find my dog. Let me pause for a second. Okay, I had to put her on the leash. She's wandering off. Um, anyway, so I was just saying, you know, I don't know that maybe in my zone, um, I'm supposedly 6A now, but we got down to negative 22 this past winter, which is more like a 4B or 4A or something. So um, maybe we just don't get a lot of blooms. I don't know. It's my first time growing Rose of Sharon here. Um, so this is my hydrangea row right here, which was doing really great before the tree fell and crushed a lot of them. Um, now they're just kind of growing back and I don't have a lot of blooms. Um, this one right here was not struck by the tree. So this one is pretty much normal. This right here is like a little weed tree shrub of some sort. I don't know what it is. I don't actually mind the foliage, but I mean, it's just been growing there and I keep cutting it back and um, I should find out what kind of plant that is. Cause if it's a native and if it is actually attractive, I guess I'll just leave it. I've got some hostas that were pretty badly afflicted by the tree. Um, this is my butterfly mag magnolia tree that you can see the main trunk was broken right here and now it's all growing back from the bottom um so i'm just gonna let it I'll, I'll cut that trunk down eventually but i'm just gonna let it grow multiple stems from the bottom like that and it'll be multi-stem tree it'll be fine multi-trunk tree um this hydrangea looking kind of sparse but it does have a couple blooms on there it was hit by the tree oh, look i got some weed growing in here um, but see, here's one of those old golds and they do get like a yellow on the end of them, but the entire thing is not yellow like that one down there. These flowers are some Cosmos. I've got some blue, uh, blue stem grass right there. My smoke bush in the back is coming along nicely. In fact, let me go back up to my back level. I've got to pull out this shrub right here. Um, I think this was another a different type of Wygela or God, I can't even remember, but whatever it was, it planted it like right around the time the tree fell and I didn't have water to continue watering it. So it's not doing great. This is my Ruby slippers, oak leaf hydrangea. It's just a baby. Um, now that I put this path in, I'm, like, I'm actually going to move this back next year once we have water again. I'm going to transplant that probably to where that shrub is so that it has space to grow in and not be right next to the path. I've got a little lime right here. That one's probably going to have to get moved back a little bit too. Maybe if I end up taking out this um, Rose of Sharon, I might just move that little lime back into that spot. This is a mini Mauvet hydrangea, an arborvitae. Um, there's my smoke bush closer up. So I think in my last video I showed this and it had been hit by the tree and um, it was probably this size before the tree hit it and then it broke it down to about, I don't know, maybe it's maybe a foot tall. Oh look, I got a broken branch here from something. I don't know what did that. You get a lot of deer going through here so it could have just been a deer stepping on it or something. Um, but yeah, a little blue stem grass, some cosmos. The cosmos are tipped over, so that's basically telling me this area is not getting enough sun. Um, I'll try planting them down a little further where it does get a little bit more consistent sun. Same here with this. I tried a fennel plant and it grew, but it is tipped over. I was trying to do that to add, you know, more pollinator stuff. Um, there's my iris. This is one of the iris beds that I had planted before the tree fell. It got a little damaged. I didn't really fix it to be honest. So I'm just kind of letting it do what it's going to do. Um, right here in front of us, this is a, what is it called? Japonica. 
Ah, shoot, I forgot the name of it. It's a really cool plant, though, but it's not a native. Um, this one. What are you? Oh, I think this is a PG hydrangea. I've actually never seen this bloom. I bought this as, like, a, a bare root. And it was super cheap. I think I got two for $8 or something. So, it's just this first year. It's growing. Look, here's another seedling from that Rose of Sharon, I'm pretty sure. Um, I've got a Pinky Winky right here. Again, this is too close to my path now that I put a path in. So some of the, these shrubs are going to have to get adjusted in years to come, but that's all right. This plant right here is a type of cherry. I think it's in the cherry family. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I believe it's a native in this area, and it gets similar foliage color to like the smoke bush. I was just basically trying to add something that's like native or native are and also has that red leaf color to it, burgundy, to add more of that interest here in the garden. This is another one of those japonica, I want to say Iberis japonica, but I could be completely wrong. Um, but these are really cool. They just have so many different leaf colors and textures that go on. Like right now we're just seeing the variegated leaf. But earlier in the spring, it gets a lot of like pink and reddish new growth. Um, and it gets these really cool Lily of the Valley looking flowers. And then like right now, I guess these are its little seed things. Um, I think this is wild violet is what somebody told me. I asked on like a plant ID group and that's what they said. Um, it's spreading throughout this area. Um, I do want to definitely ID that because if it's a native ground cover, I'll just let it go. But it feels very weedy and it's definitely spreading quickly. So hopefully it's not something bad. Um, this is my nine bark, which is, I mean, it looks healthy, but it has just been the slowest growing thing. So I don't know. Maybe I need to move it somewhere that has like more water. Um, this area actually gets a lot more sun now that my tree fell. But it used to be a lot more shaded. Got a couple first year um, mullion or verbascum is what those are. And next year they will grow up these tall yellow stalks. I really like those flowers. I have some in my front terrace garden as well. Here's another little blue stem native grass. Another one of my iris uh, beds that I made. So... In one of my last videos, I had, before the tree fell, I had planted a bunch of my, um, plants that I grew from seed. They were, um, God, I can't, my mind is not working well today. Um, the tall ones that are kind of bell-shaped. Oh my God, what are they called? I can't remember. Oh my God. Uh, I'll try to put the name of what I'm talking about in here. But anyway, I must have planted like 15 little groupings along this pathway of this plant that is a biennial. The first year it just grows green, uh, you know, growth. And then the next year it shoots up the tall um, stalks and they're really beautiful. And then they self seed around and, um, Anyway, the point is that I don't think any of those made it because right after I made that video where I had planted all of those seedlings out, the tree fell on my house and I was not able to water any of those seedlings. And so sadly, I'm pretty sure that none of those are going to be coming back next year or anything, um, which is just really unfortunate. But, you know, that's just the cards that we were dealt and... Most of my garden was spared, and most of this stuff will come back bigger and better next year. So I'm just trying not to be sad about stuff. Um, this is my lace cap, Invincible lace cap, and it's already kind of going green and done for the year, but I still like the look of, of these little seed heads or whatever those are. This little thing right here is a hydrangea. I think that one is a... Ruby. Yeah, this one. 
and this one over here are both rubies. That is a Hosta. Um, so like a lot of these little hydrangeas were kind of knocked out by the tree and also most of my Hostas. So you'll see they're just very small and just kind of coming back. A lot of them are damaged. Um, but next year you won't even be able to tell it happened. So here's my daughter's peach tree that I had planted for her. And sadly, the leader right here got broken off during the, the great tree fall event. Um, so now it kind of looks like a Y. I'm debating on whether I should keep this in or pull it out since it lost its leader. Like, I feel like this butterfly magnolia is going to grow up and be beautiful as a multi-stem trunk tree, so it's not going to really matter. But I don't know about that peach tree. Um, if anybody has any advice, let me know. I have some random daylilies planted in here. Um, I liked the idea of having, like, hydrangeas and hostas on this bottom row and then having... Um, a little higher because this is a terrace. There's a rock wall in here that's kind of buried right now behind my behind my mulch, but eventually you'll see more of that rock wall. But anyway, I wanted to have like in between the path and um, these lower level hydrangeas and stuff, I wanted to have various plants that would kind of pop through and above and be pretty like, like daylilies and um, just other various flowers. But the deer love to come through this garden and eat all my daylily heads off. So I don't know that this is going to be a place where they're going to stay. I don't know what this native plant is, but it's really cute. These flowers, they have ants all over them. And other little pollinators are flying around. And then if you look really close at the flowers, you can see that they have kind of this pink and purple striping on the inside of them. I mean, really cool. Foxglove. That's what the name of the <laughs> the plants that I planted by seed that I was trying to remember that I planted like a whole ton of them. Um, and then I wasn't able to water them. So I don't think any of them made it. That's what I was trying to think of. It's foxglove. So anyhow, this is how the hydrangea garden is doing. It used to be what I considered a part shade garden. Um, it is early morning right now, so the sun's not fully up, but once the sun gets up higher, this whole area is now in the sun because that tree is no longer shading it. So hopefully all of this stuff can adjust. I think most of my hydrangeas can adjust to the amount of sun they're going to be getting, so it should be fine. This is the east side. This area is under tree cover. And so this area here in the front is really, truly what I consider my shade garden. I have lots of hostas. I've got some, um, that big chartreuse one is a Aurelia Sun King. I love that, that plant. Um, it dies all the way to the ground and then comes back bigger like that, like every year. I just love it. Um, I've got some hookahs in here. That's a lemon lace elderberry. It's doing okay. Like, I like it there, but I also feel like if I put that in a place that had more sun, it'll get big, bigger faster and also have um, probably better coloring. Wow, look at the flowers on that hosta. Those things are like four feet tall. You see that? I don't know that I've ever seen hostas have flowers that tall. I see there's some pokeweed and some other grass and weeds growing in here since I haven't been around this property to be dealing with any of this. Oh wow, quite a bit of overgrowth here. Um, this weekend I will try to come back and clean this up quite a bit because this is looking pretty bad. But that's what happens when your garden is completely neglected. Let's check out, oh my God, look at this mess. Look at all this grass. I have to get in here and do some major, major weeding. This is my grape plant growing along the banister of this railing or whatever. That 
got some peonies there, not in bloom. Um, there's a rose bush buried in all that grass. The reason I was coming down here though is to show you my four o'clocks. Remember I just planted these in like April? Secret stop. They wouldn't usually be open probably, but it's early morning still and it's still kind of cool out. So we're getting to see them. So many pretty colors. We've got white, pink, yellow, more of a red. Good morning. There's purple over here. Yellow and red, white. So many colors. Now, do I love these as my front terrace um, filler? I think so. I was, I was thinking they were going to get big and kind of start hanging over like that, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're a little messier than I would like, but I feel like if I was actually living here and pulling the weeds, you know, on a weekly basis and uh, watering them, like, keep in mind, none of these plants have had any water for like a month and a half. So all of the stuff that we're seeing here, this is just how it's dealing with Mother Nature. Um... So yeah, I think I'm happy with these four clocks basically looking like an overflowing um, container plant. Sorry, I gotta move this trash can out of the way. <clears throat> Once again, my potato vines got huge and I wanted them to cover up all those cracks in my concrete which they have done magnificently okay once again i am astounded by the number of pollinators that are on this oregano this is regular garden oregano that i bought last year and i planted it last year i never cut it back or anything and this is what it looks like now and i've never seen so many different kinds of bees, ants, wasps, flies, so many different kinds of bugs constantly flying around. Any other plant that I've planted, this has by far been the most so far. So I was like, is this a native? It's not a native, um, but apparently a ton of our native insects uh, still utilize it. So I will definitely be growing more of this. Like, look how pretty that is. That's just regular garden oregano. It's not even the fancy kind. I'm going to plant more of that in probably several places in my yard because I love the fact that it brings the pollinators and I just, I like the way it looks. So that's a winner. Um, my geranium is growing but i think it's getting shaded out it's like i this is the geranium right here and i think it's just really getting shaded out by both this um oregano and also my potato vine so i might need to come in here and clear out some stuff just to give it more help even this um, Artemisia, like it's starting to get buried a little bit by some stuff next to it. All these leaves. Um, this area definitely needs some attention. I decided that this um, Monarda bee balm right here is gonna get moved to probably up there in the hydrangea garden where I was just showing you guys. It's the wild type, it gets um, powdery mildew on it every year. And I like it, I don't wanna remove it from my yard. I just feel like it's too tall right here. Like I cut this down by like half about a month ago and it still put out some blooms but not many because I cut it down so dramatically. Um, I just, like if I hadn't cut that, it would probably be another two or three feet tall at least probably three feet taller and it would be flopping over 
and it's just it just doesn't fit in this spot it's too much I'm also feeling like this grass is too tall for this I've kind of come to the decision that I want everything in this terrace garden to be lower growing because I don't want to hide the walls the walls are beautiful somebody spent a lot of money on this before I moved in here to put in those walls and I don't want to hide them completely behind plants like I want the plants there but I also want to be able to see those that hardscaping so some of these taller things I've decided I'm taking out and moving elsewhere in my garden and I'm going to just put in more of the things that I like that are lower growing like this right here um, I can't think of what it's called right now it smells really bad but it's beautiful <laughs> it's great color and um, I even like these little weird flowers that it has um, but that's a really cool plant it's a rainbow something rainbow ascot eupatorium maybe i'm just throwing names out here i've been out of my garden so i'm starting to get rusty on everything um here's my um yarrow bed this is the red and pink one and i cut this back maybe a month ago so obviously it's all reblooming and looks pretty good um these right here are dahlias that I have not been here to deadhead so yeah I don't know maybe they're coming to the end of their bloom cycle anyway but it certainly helps if you keep deadheading them pulling off these off and then um you know it'll put out more buds until it comes to the kind of natural end of its life got some brown-eyed Susans here this um Salvia could desperately need a cut back and maybe it would give us some more pretty blooms before the end of the season, but I don't have any scissors with me today, I don't think. I guess I could get my hedge trimmers out of the shed. Um, another giant potato vine. More sedums. More salvias that need to be cut back. More cosmos. These are getting pulled out. Those don't really fit in there. They're too tall and floppy. These are standing up really nicely, but again, I don't want this garden to have such tall plants. It just looks too weedy. And sorry about the noise. Um, they're still doing, this road is getting resurfaced. So there's a lot of construction noise. I'm gonna try to get through this part fast because my dog's gonna keep barking at these people. So let's just look. This ground cover right here, whatever this is called, kind of not loving it. It's just too messy looking, but it is low growing. So I'm thinking about whether I want to leave that in or not. This plant right here, I bought at a nursery, not this grass. I think it might be um, a type of Artemisia, but I'm not really sure. And then this was like a freebie that was in the pot, which is actually why I bought this particular plant because it had a free plant in it. And I don't know what this is. If any of you know what that is, let me know. It also has the coloring of Artemisia. This one doesn't really, I'm not sure what this is, but I want to say when I bought that, I thought it was Artemisia. Um, here's some purple Veronica. This is snow and summer, which Hasn't bloomed for me this year, but hopefully next year. This just got planted like right before I was um, forced to stop watering the garden. These are some asters. This is an annual that I bought for color to add into this spot. And I don't know what it's called, but I really like it. So if I see that again in the future, I will probably will do that again. More yarrow. Lamb's ear. That's just regular garden sage down there that I planted last year. I didn't cut it, or no, I did cut that back so it didn't bloom, but it kind of looks like a little shrub. I really like it. So I think every year I will cut that back after winter because it looks really bad. Like when the winter kills all of this foliage, it does not look good, um, but it grew back nicely and it looks like a little shrub. And I think there was probably like three or maybe five little sage plants planted there. It's kind of swallowing up this um, lamb's ear, so I need to move that one. I'll probably actually divide all of these lamb's ear in late winter, early spring. 
here's another artemisia that I have that's kind of starting to get buried so I need to move some things that's one of the reasons I came over to the house today was to see if there's anything that I can move um, before the construction people really start on the house and I'll show you the area that I'm talking about it's not out here just ignore my top my second terrace all of that grass and everything was supposed to be dealt with this year but then the tree happened and I have not been able to get around to that oh my god they put in steps that did not used to be there how adorable look so I told you guys they were redoing this road and as part of the project they redid our um, curb which needed to be fixed really badly so I'm so happy about that but they just added in these steps and those weren't even there before I love it thank you city of council bluffs all right let's go back up the stairs i guess i'll show you my roses real quick before we move on this over here i've got like some Oriental lilies, some Veronica, elephant ears. There's some, I still be over there. That's in Empress Wu Hosta. More butterfly weed, more Oriental lilies. Um, everything that's in these pots right here is probably just gonna get thrown away to be honest with you. Uh, this is just stuff that I had in pots and I haven't been able to water it. I guess I should have moved it to the other house like as soon as we moved over there and I could have started watering it. But to be honest, most of it was already starting to die by then. So I just tried to put it out here where it could get some rain, but it hasn't been raining a whole ton. Um, so yeah, a lot of that stuff died, sadly. This really big arching plant is my um, climbing rose that needs to get tied back to this porch. Um, this type is called Eden. I think it's Eden Climbing Rose. It's got a really huge pink bloom, but they're not blooming right now. Um, and this one right here is the same. So I want those to be going on my railing like this. And I can see that I really need to do this one. Otherwise those stems are going to get so stiff and they're not going to bend easily. Some dahlias here that have collapsed. I did not stake those, I should have. But again, I haven't been in this garden for, other than just to visit, since June 25th. Uh, this is part of our fence that they tore down to get the tree out. The tree fell on both sides of the house. It was so big, crushed the whole back of the house. Oh my God. This rose bush right here is huge. Um, this is the this is a David Austin. It's uh, Jacques Cartier, I think is the name of it. Then you see my iceberg, that white one right there. I don't know the name of that corally pinkish orange one down there. That was um, that was actually rootstock of a rose that the top died, and I don't know what that is. Same with this one over here that's a similar color but more of a lighter pinky coral whereas that one is kind of a darker orange coral um I, I have a bunch of roses in here some of them are just not in bloom this one right here is the one i bought myself for mother's day what is it called raspberry cupcake this rose has the most amazing smelling blooms when it does bloom. Um, I mean, I don't think I've ever smelled a stronger smelling rose. But I am new into growing roses. So, I'll get back to you on that. This one right here is Distant Drums. And it's only, really it's first year. All of these roses got put in like last fall. So, here's a newer bud. And here's some older ones. 
I just want you all to remember that none of these have been tended to because of the tree and I haven't been here to help them. That is a another David Austin Rose. This is the Lady Shalot, Lady of Shalot, something like that. Um, coming down. And their blooms are kind of like range from peach to pink to even more of an orangey color. I planted lavender in between all of my roses. So there's a bunch of lavender planted in here. It's just that the garden's such a weedy mess right now. This rose is called Abbe de Cluny. Kind of an older bloom, but that's the only one on there right now. That rose has no blooms, no blooms, and no blooms. All of the weeds are seriously stressing me out. But I have a lot of stuff to do. I can't worry about that all the time. So, the real reason I came over here today is because this little bed back here, my husband is convinced that once they start bringing in the big trucks and everything to tear down the house, the back part of the house, um, he says, you know they're gonna probably drive over all of this or at least, you know, knock it over and stuff. And he's probably not wrong because on the other side of my garden, which I didn't show you yet, when they went to pull the tree parts out, see there's still part of the big trunk right there, um, but when they got the majority of the tree out, they drove these little tractor type things all through my garden on the other side of the house. Like absolutely no consideration whatsoever for anything that was planted. So he's like, if you want any of this stuff to live, you probably need to dig it up and move it. Well, I can't move it here because I have no water and it's still August. So um, if I do move it, it probably won't live. So what I'm planning to do is probably dig up all of these hostas and this, uh, these shrubby things right here are called, um, oh, those are St. John's warts. So I'll probably move those. I also have like a lot of bulbs in this bed, um, tulip bulbs and daffodil bulbs and all kinds of stuff. And I think what I need to do is just dig up as much of this as I can. And I'm planning to move it over to the other house. And I have a bed that's like part shade that I can plant it in over there. And I have water over there. And so, um, that's going to be a big job, but that's, that's what I'm planning to do is move all of that stuff. So it's not ruined. And then when I move back into this house next year, I'll just have to dig it up again and bring it back unless I just decide to leave it at the other house. Um, we'll see. So going this way through the wreckage, um, it's just, you know, it just looks terrible, but just keep in mind all of this stuff's going to be removed soon because they're going to start tearing down this house. Um, those are my two giant ferns that I haven't moved yet because I just haven't really known what to do about it. Um, but see, this is the side garden. I had all kinds of stuff planted in here and they drove through here with their little tractor things to just completely ruin my bog garden. Like you can see parts of it over here are still intact, but over here, all of this destruction was not from the tree. I mean, the tree did fall in this area, but this, all of this stone and everything is from their tractor things driving over my hardscaping. And it, by doing that, it like smushed it all into my, my garden beds, like just pulverized some of these stones over here. And so if I don't want this to happen to the garden on the other side of my house, then I probably need to move whatever is in there, you know. None of this stuff used to look like this. I do have, so there used to be like, this was a whole bed right here. It wrapped around, like it just completely wrapped around and everything was just driven over. Um, I'm trying to see like 
small things that I might be able to save. Like I think this right here, not that grass, but this right here, I think is some of my flocks. But like that's literally the point I'm at is do I just, that's just some annuals. I'll leave that. But you know, it's like, what do I try to save? This really cool plant right here. I don't remember the name of it. I want to say it was like elegant feather or something, but I think this is so cool. And I had just planted that this spring and although it is alive, they just threw, you know, they just threw concrete blocks on it. And it's my fountain that got broken by the tree. Um, but like this plant right here, this is another thing that I would like to come back next year. And so I'm asking myself, do I need to move this? So that they don't destroy it. This is my black lace elderberry bush. Um, it wasn't hit by the tree, but it does appear that it's been a little damaged. Um, this right here is, um, what is it called? Gara. Uh, this plant with the red kind of leaves and stuff. It's buried in grass right now, but that's a really beautiful plant when it is growing. Here's another um, geranium, I think. Yeah, this is a geranium that I had transplanted over here because it just wasn't doing well where it was before. And then of course, right after I transplanted it, this crazy stuff had to happen. Oh great, it's growing through a hole in this. So there's no way for me to not hurt that. Okay. But I mean the plants are doing the best they can, but they're just definitely not getting any help. So there it is. That's what's left of it. I don't even know if I tried to transplant that if it would live. Okay guys, this is a long video. I better end it here. But I just wanted to give you an update on how things are going over here at my real home that I'm not living in right now. My garden's totally neglected. But there are still some pretty things happening and I know it's putting a lot of growth for next year. At least the roots are growing and next year everything has a new opportunity to be beautiful again. So. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm just wishing we could fast forward through winter and through the house being rebuilt and come back home and be in my garden again. All right, well, take care. We'll talk to you next time.